I'm going to start with a technology confession. The history of the web has been spectacular across all aspects, but it has been vexing in one thing that was missing from it. Being digital in the world of the web was missing something that was very native to it, in the same way that websites are very native to the web. Up until now, if you think about it, the web consisted mostly of moving information around. Being digital has been fundamental to many different areas, from e-commerce to publishing, travel services, supply chain, e-services. It has touched every single industry that you can think of. However, there's one thing that the web has not touched yet in a very fundamental way. And that thing is money. So now you may be thinking, well, what are you talking about, William? We can move money today on the web. Yes, you are right. But up until now, the banks were really in the middle of all of these transactions. And they led us to believe that we were interacting with each other. Yes, they fooled us. Whereas we, they were facilitating these interactions on our behalf. And as long as they controlled everything, they led us to believe that we needed their trust in order to store our money or to move our money. And that was true up until four years ago when a new word started to enter our vocabulary, a new form of money, digital money, came along, Bitcoin, which I'm sure you've heard of. But even more important than Bitcoin and more fundamental to our future is the technology behind Bitcoin, and that is the blockchain. You may have heard about the blockchain, it may be a new word, maybe it's obscure, but it's going to remain in our vocabulary in the same way as the web and the internet have entered our vocabulary and have been in it for the last 20 years. What is the blockchain? The blockchain is this invisible network that is an overlay on top of the web. Think of it as doing the same thing that banks were doing to our money. Banks were needed to move our money. The blockchains are going to be needed to move this new form of money, the cryptocurrency. So the blockchains are this linkage between cryptocurrency. But the main difference is that blockchains are not owned by one entity or by one person. They are collectively shared, collectively operated, and collectively owned by thousands and thousands of computers around the world. So unlike banks, there is no bricks and mortar. They can scale and they can grow with no borders and without any regulation. And that, by the way, is a feature, not a bug. So remember the word blockchain. If money was the first application of the blockchain, and the reason why I said that it had not been touched fundamentally is because the banks were really between us and the internet, whereas cryptocurrency, what the blockchain enables, is now enabling peer-to-peer -peer transactions. That is really at the core of the internet. And if this was the first application, what do you think the next application is beyond money? Work. So let me ask you, how many of you, and please raise your hands, have one job, a job? So keep your hands. How many of you have two jobs? How many of you have three jobs? OK. A lot of hands went down. Let me be honest with you. I think most of you that did not keep your hands up, I think you were lying to yourselves a little bit. Because in reality, we all have three jobs. 
The first job is the job that you go to the office for, or to the factory, or to a store. You get paid at the end of the week or at the end of the month. The second job is the job you have for taking care of yourself, taking care of your kids, your siblings, your house, cleaning, doing the dishes. The third job is the job that was outsourced, not to somebody in the Philippines or in India or in Poland. It was outsourced to you by a friendly company that you do business with on a daily basis, perhaps. They outsourced the job that used to be performed by one of their employees, and now you're doing it. Think about booking a travel online or booking a hotel online or any type of self-service task that you are now doing thanks to the web. But the difference is that we had not been paid for this kind of job in the past. And this is about to change. Work as we know it is going to be married to the blockchain in more ways than one. And we can divide work in two different types. There's active work and passive work. Active work is the work that you are very conscious about. You know that you are doing something. You are driving a car or you are writing a, a software program. You are conscious of what you're doing. The more fascinating type of work is passive work. It is fascinating because you are doing it without being aware of you doing it. And more importantly, it is generating value without you knowing that it is generating value. And the new thing with the blockchain is that somebody, some company, is going to be willing to pay you for the value that you are generating by doing passive work, because that is valuable to them. In the same way as governments issue currency, and every government, every country has their own currency, in the near future, and this is happening right now, companies will be issuing their own currency, which we will call cryptocurrency, or crypto for short. And they will be issuing that currency to us. And this will be a currency that is liquid. It is not the same as getting, receiving points or getting a store credit. It is something that you can buy and sell with. You can earn something, and you can spend it at the same time. Let me give you some examples. Attention. Attention is a currency. Think about Facebook. The average person spends about an hour per day on Facebook. Doing what? We give them our attention. They take our attention. They take the eyeballs that we have, the time we've spent, and they repackage it and sell it as advertising. And what do they give us? Nothing in return. If Facebook was reinvented in the day of the blockchain in a decentralized manner, they would be compensating us because we are the ones that are helping them to resell the advertising that they are making billions of dollars for. Attention is a currency, and we own it, and we will be able to benefit from it in the future. With the blockchain, there are decentralized content networks now that will pay you if you spend time with them. Another example, data. We are data emitting devices constantly. Everywhere we go, everything we do, everything about us, our height, weight, demographics, age, what we are doing, this is all valuable data. What if we could provide that data to another entity that could take the data, aggregate it, and give us something back in return that is more valuable to us? But for them, it was valuable to receive our data. What if they gave us some value, a token for our data, a token in the form of a cryptocurrency, which we can then reuse to buy something else? I'm sure that many of you, maybe not all, would gladly say, if that was the case, please take my data. 
another area. It's something we own and maybe we can share. And I'm not thinking of Airbnb. Think about your own computers, which are sitting there for most of the time doing nothing. What, could we, what if we could share a little tiny piece of your disk drive or a tiny piece of your processing power that you're not using and you can get paid for it? And then one day you want more, maybe you can use that currency to buy something yourself. These are examples that are happening right now. So what is going on right now, we're moving from user-generated content, which you are familiar with, which is really the cornerstone of social media. When you post a picture on Instagram, or when you write a few lines on Facebook or on a blog, that is called user-generated content. In the future, we're going to have user-generated work. But this is work which we are going to get paid for by the blockchain, by all of these cryptocurrencies that will come into existence. These are some examples of some of those tokens or cryptocurrency tokens. Gollum is for buying and selling cloud computing. Another one called StoreJ for cloud storage. Saya for file transfer. Steemit for content publishing. You publish something, you get voted up, you earn some Steam dollars. And you can trade them for real dollars. And there will be a plethora of these types of work-related cryptocurrencies that will be issued by these companies. And we are going to be the recipient of these currencies. Now, let's think about this. What's going on here, we have three big themes that have converged at the same time. We have a new system of money, digital money, cryptocurrency, which is the internet of money, money on wings that can travel very fast, nobody in the middle. We have a new system of work where we do passive work, we generate value, and we get paid for it. And we have a new system of technology, the blockchain, which is very decentralized, peer-to-peer, -peer, like the web. It's everywhere and nowhere. What's the end result? The end result is that we're going to have a lot of services that are going to become decentralized, that are going to not be centralized. Facebook is centralized. So let's imagine. Imagine banking without banks that maybe we don't trust or maybe are not fast enough for us or too expensive to do business with. Imagine e-commerce without eBay, without credit card fees, without listing fees. Imagine gambling without a house. Maybe we don't trust the house. Imagine transportation without Uber, where every driver is a node of their own and we can deal with them directly. Imagine stock trading without the NASDAQ or stock exchanges, where we can interact and peer-to-peer -peer trade with each other. This is happening right now in a small scale, but that is how the web started as well, more than 20 years ago. And we are going to be moving from a web economy to a blockchain economy. Today, the blockchain economy overall is probably about $40 billion. When you add the value of all of the cryptocurrencies that exist today, in addition to the companies that are part of this phenomenon. But in the future, it is going to get bigger and bigger slowly. Everything starts small until it is big. The end game is going to be a combination of currency tokens and work-related tokens, and we'll be able to trade them. And we'll be able to spend and earn at the same time. And that is why this is now going to be a new economy of its own. So how do you get involved? How do you benefit and how do you participate in this? You have to be curious and try to go and find out where you can get involved and earn tokens or earn currency for some of the work that you could, you could be doing, or maybe you have something that others want, and you could be sharing it and receiving tokens in return. 
This is the future. So the blockchain has not just given us a new form of money. It has given us a new form of earning money as well and spending it. And you might think, well, what's wrong with the system that we have today? Why are we not happy with what we have? This is not something about changing what we have today. We cannot change the current system. There comes a point in the technology evolution where there is a paradigm shift. And you cannot change anything anymore. You have to go to a new system. The cellular phones, when they came along, they did not use the landlines. They put new towers everywhere. There was a new infrastructure. When the web came along, the web did not use the old mainframes, the computer mainframes. It was a new network out there. The same thing is happening with the blockchain and the currency is behind it. This is a new form of money. It's a new form of network where the trust is with the network, not with the banks not with the credit card companies, not with the financial intermediaries. And that is really the future of the blockchain. So I'm going to leave you with this thought. Remember that the money in your pocket and the money in your bank account is going to get some competition. Competition is going to come from cryptocurrency in your smartphone wallets and inside of the applications in your smartphones that you will be using on a daily basis where you earn and you spend cryptocurrency. This is the future, and I hope you are as excited as I am about it. It's going to touch you, and I hope it's going to inspire you at the same time. Welcome to the blockchain economy. <laughs>